Hello everyone, welcome to the Common Sense Academy. Today I'm going to look at an article titled Scam Artists Promised Mortgage Relief Delivered Heartbreak to Hawaii Homeowners. Anthony Williams ripped off homeowners in several states, prosecutors say. In Hawaii, some of his marks then enticed new victims in their Filipino community. This is an article I found recently published uh, out of the Hawaii, the Honolulu Civil Beat. Here's this gentleman, Anthony Williams here. And it's essentially the story uh, of a, a sovereign citizen who kept getting himself into trouble and finally got convicted in a federal court. Um, I think there's a, a lot of illuminating aspects here. We're going to learn a little bit. We're going to have fun. We're going to run over this story because I report on sovereign citizens, First Amendment auditors, and other people behaving badly. Um, but before we get started, if you like my content, please like, subscribe, comment, and share. Really looking to get to 10,000 subscribers. Most of my viewers aren't subscribed, so go ahead and subscribe if you would. Um, and some of you came here just for the simultaneous sip. Um, this, si this same time sip, uh, it tastes better when we drink it together. It gives you a little bit of a rush and, uh, and, and gets you ready for the content. All right, so raise your cup in the air. I hope everyone's staying safe with the coronavirus. Do a little cheers. I got here my favorite beverage. I know it's at the end. It's at the end. It doesn't look pleasing to the camera. That's okay. It still tastes good. Um, raise your cup in the air. Cheers with me. It tastes better when we sip together. Okay, Mary Jane and Ray LaForteza met a man in 2013 who told them he could cut their mortgage payment and term in half. The man, the natural man, Anthony Williams wielded handcuffs and what looked like a law enforcement badge. Mary Jane LaForteza would later testify at a federal criminal trial against him in 2020. Let me pause real quick. That always reminds me of Jeremy DeWitt. Jeremy the, 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 the wit. Jeremy DeWitt. Okay. He called himself a private attorney general. That is a real big misuse of language there, friends and family. All right. Attorney general. There's one attorney general, okay, who essentially in a state. Um, that it's a very powerful title, so walking around using that title is a pretty big deal. The La Fortezas were struggling to make payments and had 10 people living in their Waipahu home, she said. He said he said he could help, and they believed him, so they signed up with his business, Mortgage Enterprise Investments. Um, here's a screenshot of his, his little website here. Look at this, Common Law Office of America people. I mean, anytime you see something like that, you know you're being schemed. Common law office, common law lawyer, common law warrant, BS. It turned out their belief was misplaced. Within months of paying Williams, who they thought had taken over their mortgage from their original lender, the couple received a foreclosure notice. And later, when actual law enforcement came to evict the La Fortezas, neither Williams nor his employees were there. This is going to be a theme. Nobody helped us, Mary Jane La Forteza said, bursting into tears from the witness stand. The La Fortezas are just two of hundreds who fell victim to Williams, who was convicted of mail and wire fraud by a federal jury last month in his accomplice's mortgage reduction fraud scheme in Hawaii. Williams was tried and convicted at the U.S. District Court in Hawaii. There's the, there's the uh, courthouse. Federal prosecutors say he enlisted 112 victims in the state and fraudulently obtained more than $218,000. State invest investigators say there could be more. There probably is more. The exact number of victims is difficult to ascertain because of destroyed books and ledgers. The fraud scheme was extensive and predatory, targeting poor immigrant families who are non-native English speakers, U.S. Attorney Kenneth Sorensen said. It preyed upon the most vulnerable. Williams' reach was not limited to Hawaii. Prosecutors called him a ringleader of a widespread nationwide scheme to defraud homeowners and banking institutions that spanned numerous states, including Florida, Tennessee, Arizona, and California. 
Williams, however, denied that he ever defrauded people. Representing himself at trial, like all, a good sovereign citizen would, he said federal prosecutors hadn't proven that he committed mail and wire fraud. His court-appointed a a standby attorney, Lars Isaacson, declined to comment. And just so you know, mail and wire fraud is sort of a, uh, of a catch-all for um, financial fraudulent crimes under federal law. It's sort of a catch-all crime. Their argument is basis, Williams said in court, to respond to Sorensen's assertion that he targeted vulnerable, peop vulnerable people. In a motion for acquittal, he wrote, he only sought to protect homeowners from foreclosure and to expose the fraud that had been perpetrated upon them by the banks, the FBI, and the courts. He sought to do through mortgage enterprise investments and another business he ran, the Common Law Office of America through which he acted as a private attorney general and provided legal representation. Oh, another big no-no. But he was not a licensed attorney in Hawaii or any state. He was abiding by his own laws. I like how they said that there, this journalist. Based on what's called the Sovereign Citizen Movement, which the Federal Bureau of Investigation classifies as a form of domestic terrorism. Southern Poverty Law Center describes it as a movement whose participants don't believe laws apply to them or that they have to pay taxes. That's being that's a generous description. That's a generous. There's his little fake card, United States Office of the Private Attorney General. Um, Williams Associates have pleaded guilty in connection with the scheme, including his mother, Barbara Williams, who helped him operate a bank account in Colleen, Texas. The mother pleaded guilty to failure to report commission of wire fraud. It is truly sad when you drag your mother into committing crimes. Terrible. Two others, Hawaii-based Filipino immigrants Annabel Kabebe and Henry Maline, both pleaded guilty to conspiracy to commit wire fraud in their respective cases. Victims of Williams' scheme themselves, they turned on their own community and helped Williams rec recruit other Yokano-speaking immigrants as clients for mortgage enterprise investments. And when Williams was extradited to another state and incarcerated, Kabebe, Maline, and others set up their own copycat company using a nearly identical name to continue to carry out the fraud scheme. Wow, so these people were defrauded by this guy and then they joined his ranks to defraud additional people. Sad. The mortgage crisis of 2008 produced many novel legal theories concocted by people offering to help reduce mortgage payments, said Stephen Levins of the Office of Consumer Protection. Mortgage enterprise investments was one scheme trying to make money from distressed homeowners. Going to someone who's process, process, promising you the moon and has a track record of not being able to fulfill those promises and is asking you for a lot of money up front raises a lot of red flags, he said. Yes, it absolutely does. And sovereign citizens didn't need a mortgage crisis as an excuse to defraud people. They've been doing it before. They'll be doing it after. Sovereign citizens didn't come from the 2008 mortgage crisis, okay? They came from some crazy people uh, who, who've been around for a long time. The scam. Williams and his associates conned people into believing their mortgage payments could be reduced by filing bogus financing statements and mortgages with state authorities, federal, and state with state authorities, federal and state investigations show. The La Fortezas had a $520,000 mortgage from their bank, according to court testimony. La Forteza testified that Williams told her Mortgage Enterprise Investments, or MEI, would take it over, making the existing mortgage invalid. He told me we're going to stop paying CPB. MEI will do everything, he said. There's their house. There's the house they lost for a sham mortgage relief scheme. To boost its legitimacy, the company would file fake documents, including, oh, here it is, a Uniform Commercial Code financing statement with the Hawaii Bureau of, fin of Conveyances, claiming the existing loan had been discharged, court filings show. So um, these fake UCC filings are really, really dangerous. L listen, everybody, if anybody comes to you and talks to you about a, a UCC filing and you are not some sort of like multi-million dollar business, you, it should immediately raise a red flag. The La Fortezas and other victims of the business paid him a signing fee and signed several documents, including an application, power of attorney, foreclosure, disclosure terms, and a condition sheet. Believing their mortgage had been taken over, they began making reduced payments directly to MEI, which pocketed the money. 
clients were told to notify Williams and his firm, the Common Law Office of America, if they got delinquent delinquency notices or legal communication from their original lenders. Here's another shot of his scheme uh, with a couple other people that he enlisted um, to defraud people. The firm's website is now defunct, but it used to showcase Williams as a private attorney general and Kabebe as the deputy private attorney general. Services offered by the firm included mortgage reduction, foreclosure assistance, document writing, and power of attorney. Right, a power of attorney is just what you need. If you get a power of attorney, you can wrongfully act in that person's name. It's, it's a great device for fraud in the wrong hands. After making about five payments to Williams Company, Mary Jane LaForteza testified she and her husband received a foreclosure notice. Yeah, because five months went by where you didn't pay your mortgage. It's not your fault, man. It's not your fault. It's this Williams guy's fault. Puzzled, she said they reached out to Kabebe for an explanation. They were told not to worry. But months later, the foreclosure letter turned into an eviction notice. Once again, La Forteza said they were told not to worry. FBI agents were coming to guard the house. <laughs> that was a good one. But in October 2015, when men came knocking on the door to evict them, the FBI didn't show. Nah. -uh. No one did. Above the law. The self-proclaimed private attorney general carried handcuffs on his belt along with a badge inscribed Sovereign Peace Officer according to court testimony and documents. Maybe this is a picture. Anthony Williams Belt carried his Sovereign Peace Officer badge and handcuffs. He also carried an identification card claiming diplomatic immunity. I, he watched too much lethal weapon, I can tell you. It read, do not detain, do not arrest. Oh, oh, magic words. Federal prosecutors said he used those props to persuade clients he was legitimate. His accomplice, Kabebe, testified that Williams believed himself to be above the law. Well, we noticed that. He said he didn't need a driver's license or a license plate. More red flags. The sovereign citizen movement empowers its followers to decide which laws to obey and which to ignore, according to the Southern Poverty Law Center. I couldn't agree more. Sovereigns are clogging up the courts with indecipherable filings, and when cornered, many of them lash out in rage, frustration, and in most extreme cases, acts of deadly violence, usually directed against government officials, it states on the website. For the SPLC. Williams has filed numerous motions in federal court and state cases citing these kinds of eccentric views. And there are some of his filings. Ridiculous. In the motions for his federal wire, wire and mail fraud case, he accuses prosecutors, or prosecutors of withholding discovery and deleting contents of the discovery. The judge of secretly being a prosecutor in the U.S. government of orchestrating the 9-11 bombings, among other things. Good job, sir. Good job. Um, I will say sometimes we attorneys, we accuse judges of being prosecutors because sometimes they just side so much with the prosecution. It's, um, it's, it's kind of funny. Um, but, you know, I, I shouldn't make a joke there. This guy's dangerous. Williams also repeatedly attempted in vain to get U.S. District Court Judge Leslie Kobayashi removed. Despite his unorthodox behavior, he was found competent to stand trial in January 2019. And despite his contempt for conventional law, Williams has a history of getting caught up in it. There's his face, smiling. Williams was sentenced to 180 days in jail for the unauthorized practice of law. Look at that. Hawaii flagged him as early as September 2013 when then Attorney General David Louie filed a civil suit against his law firm for practicing law illegally and operating a fraudulent mortgage rescue scheme. Around the same time, Hawaii extradited him to Georgia on an unrelated criminal charge which was later dropped, though he spent about nine months in jail awaiting trial. His run-ins with the law didn't end there. In Broward County, Florida, he was convicted of unauthorized practice of law in 2016, then grand theft in 26, 2017, for which he received a 15-year prison sentence. Wow, I wonder how much of that he served. The grand theft charge was related to another mortgage-related scheme in which he was marketing a service whereby he, as an attorney, could perform the magical act of making mortgages disappear, federal prosecutors said in the trial brief. I find it funny that they put that in the trial brief. It's true. It would be a magical act for a mortgage to just disappear. He was using the same scheme, they said, involving mortgage enterprise investments in the Common Law Office of America. Let's do another sip real quick. The accomplices. 
While Williams was busy appearing in courts and jails in multiple states, Mortgage Enterprise Investments and the Common Law Office of America were in the care of his associates. Two of them, Maline and Kabebe, who both started out as clients. Kabebe testified during Williams' criminal trial in 2020 that she didn't realize the whole operation was a fraud until February 2014. Her attorney, Michael Green, said she helped him because she believed he could, have, he could help her save her properties and brought her friends in as clients. It turned out to be the same lie. Yeah, but then you started working for him? Maline, by contrast, re apparently recognized this, this scheme soon after signing up for the supposed mortgage relief according to a narrative, narrative in his 2015 bankruptcy judgment. He had attended a foreclosure hearing where Williams represented him as a private attorney general and lost. nuh -uh. Did he lose? No surprise there. Even though he admittedly knew Mortgage Enterprise was a fraud, Maloney thereafter played a prominent role in the fraudulent mortgage reduction scheme, according to the findings of fact. He went on to re recruit Yokano-speaking Filipino immigrants as clients and collected referral fees from the company in return. For his role in the scheme, Maloney was ordered to pay $200,000 in fines and $74,000 in restitution in a 2015 bankruptcy judgment. He has also pled guilty to conspiracy to commit wire fraud in a 2020 federal criminal case. Maloney could not be reached for comment. His attorney, Mark Jeffrey Victor, said Maloney declined to comment. Kabebe, who went by Deputy Private Attorney General, also recruited clients for the company. As a notary public, she notarized documents for clients for a fee, a privilege she lost following a bankruptcy judgment. She also allowed Williams to use part of a building she owned for company business. Kabebe and Malibut and Maloney took things one step further in 2013 when they and others set up a copycat company with a nearly identical name, Mortgage Enterprise, while Williams was in jail in Georgia. Didn't you know then you had to get out? Court records and testimony show they set up bank accounts under the new company. Williams points to this fact as evidence that he was a victim of their fraud, not the perpetrator, calling them the real culprits in his motion for acquittal. I bet you would, sovereign citizen, sir. One recurring narrative with the homeowners who were called to testify is that they were signed up by Maloney or Kabebe, and thus, this is where the defrauding originated from. But they were operating at your direction, sir, and you taught them everything they knew. They went behind his back, forged documents, and defrauded his consumers using the company's name, he argued. But Kabebe, who pled guilty to conspiracy to commit wire fraud, said she was only doing what she was trained to do. You trained all of us, she said to Williams during his testimony at trial. All the things you trained us in, all lies. In 2016, bankruptcy judgment, Kabebe was ordered to pay more than $165,000 in restitution. In the 2020 federal criminal case, she pled guilty to conspiracy to commit wire fraud. I accept responsibility. That's why I took the plea deal, she said. Standing on the podium as his own representative at trial, as Williams accused Kabebe of scamming him, he asked her, do you feel like you should go to jail? She answered, you should go to jail because you came here to ruin my life, Kabebe told Williams. You came here to ruin everybody's lives. You know, his, the problem with his arguments here is that he was the mastermind. He was the one running the scheme and uh, bringing everybody on board. I mean, he's got these fake documents walking around like Jeremy DeWitt pretending to be a law enforcement officer. A sad, sad story. Who knows? I mean, they were doing this for years, for years. I don't know how they got away with it for years because... As soon as that happens once, a person a person signs up with these schemes and then they get foreclosed on, okay, th that those people need to go to the police and law enforcement right away. I mean, these people end up foreclosed on, and what do they do? They tuck their tail between their legs and 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 take the take the kicking. Um, I, I understand they're probably under a lot of stress, but still, we can't let these types of people get away with these things. Okay, so I just thought this was an interesting uh, long story that I found, which uh, was recently printed. We get this sovereign citizen 
out of uh, Hawaii, uh, no less. I'll put the article in uh, the description. Um, I'm probably making you dizzy, scanning up and down. Uh, please like, subscribe, comment, and share. Trying to get to 10,000 subscribers. Give me a subscribe. Uh, it's a free way to support the show. The show will always remain free, um, but small things like subscribing, leaving a comment, and a like do a lot to help me out. Uh, thank you very much for watching Common Sense Academy. Look to my book, which will be coming out in hopefully a few weeks. Thank you very much. Common Sense Academy out.